It's been a year since President Carter, the longest-lived former president, chose to enter hospice care, preceding further medical intervention. From his home in Plains, Georgia, he has shared moments with his grandkids, watched sports, and continued influencing the world, showing us the power of dignity and love in life's final chapters. The Carter family's experience has sparked conversations across the nation. From President Carter's wife, Rosalind, joining him in hospice care to their historic 77 years of marriage, their story is a poignant reminder of love's enduring strength. Rosalind's passing, just days after entering hospice, contrasts with Jimmy's year-long journey, highlighting the personalized nature of end-of-life care. Hospice care, as Dr. Holly Yang and Dr. Joe Rotella discuss, is not just about the final days. It's about enriching the quality of life, comfort, and family. President Carter's choice has illuminated this path for many, encouraging open conversations and considering hospice care in a new light. The Carters' openness about their health has changed end-of-life care narratives and solidified their advocacy and love legacy. As the Carter family receives a presidential citation for their public journey, we're reminded of the impact of visibility and the importance of discussing life's full spectrum, including its end. As we look around the world amidst the turmoil and the noise, stories like the Carters bring us back to the core of our shared humanity. It's a powerful reminder to cherish every moment, to love deeply, and to face life's toughest challenges with grace and courage. James Earl Carter Jr., born October 1, 1924, is an American politician and humanitarian who served as the 39th President of the United States from 1977 to 1981. A member of the Democratic Party, Carter was the 76th Governor of Georgia from 1971 to 1975 and a Georgia State Senator from 1963 to 1967. At age 99, he is the oldest living former U.S. president and the longest-lived president in U.S. history. Carter was born and raised in Plains, Georgia. He graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1946 and joined the U.S. Navy's submarine service. Carter returned home afterward and revived his family's peanut-growing business. He then manifested his opposition to racial segregation, supported the growing civil rights movement, and became an activist within the Democratic Party. He was in the Georgia State Senate from 1963 to 1967 and then as governor of Georgia from 1971 to 1975. As a dark horse candidate unknown outside of Georgia, Carter won the Democratic nomination and narrowly defeated incumbent Republican President Gerald Ford in the 1976 U.S. presidential election. Carter pardoned all Vietnam War draft evaders on his second day in office. He created a national energy policy with conservation, price control, and new technology. Carter successfully pursued the Camp David Accords, the Panama Canal Treaties, and the second round of strategic arms limitation talks. He also confronted stagflation. His administration established the U.S. Department of Energy and the Department of Education. The end of his presidency was marked by the 1979-1981 Iran hostage crisis the 1979 energy crisis, the Three Mile Island accident, the Nicaraguan revolution, and the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. In response to the invasion, Carter escalated the Cold War by ending detente, imposing a grain embargo against the Soviets, enunciating the Carter Doctrine, and leading the multinational boycott of the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow. He lost the 1980 presidential election in a landslide to Republican nominee Ronald Reagan. After leaving the presidency, Carter established the Carter Center to promote and expand human rights, earning him a Nobel Peace Prize in 2002. He traveled extensively to conduct peace negotiations, monitor elections, and eradicate infectious diseases. Carter is a key figure in the nonprofit housing organization Habitat for Humanity. He wrote numerous books, ranging from political memoirs to poetry, while continuing to comment on global affairs including two books on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, in which he criticizes Israel's treatment of Palestinians as apartheid. Polls of historians and political scientists generally rank Carter as a below-average president, although his post-presidential activities are viewed in an exceptionally favorable light. He has the longest post-presidency in U.S. history, at 43 years, 29 days.